Welcome to the Brian Foltis Behavioral Finance Podcast, where we unravel the mysteries of behavioral finance and unlock the secrets to making smarter, more informed decisions with your money. Now, here's your host, Dr. Brian Foltis. This week's podcast is also a video, and this video is coming to you on a very timely basis as we're seeing the market seeing a lot of volatility here over the last couple of trading days. And when we dig in through the headlines, we see there's something that's been going on now for a while that's finally coming to the surface and it's kind of spooked the markets. And this is called the carry trade. So this is a trade that a lot of people don't know about and this is through currencies, but it has a ripple effect into equity markets, bond markets, all of the, all of the above. And we're going to talk about that today just to give you a basic understanding of what's happened, the popular trade that's going on right now, and how it's turned on its head recently. And now we're starting to see some panic around this. So let me explain to you what the carry trade looks like. We're going to use an example that has been shown in the markets these last few days, and it's all starting in Japan with the Japanese yen. And we noticed that the Nikkei was down 12% this past week. And also double digit losses as well. And that trickled into the United States as we saw some pretty significant losses here over the last couple of trading days. So we're talking about this carry trade. What is going on here? Well, the idea of the carry trade is to borrow in a foreign currency or a currency at a lower rate, convert it to a different currency, usually a more stable currency, and invest it there. And when that loan comes due, you pay that loan back with the depreciated number of that foreign currency. So with the Japanese yen, if it depreciates in value over the time that you're borrowing, you use less US dollars to pay off that loan. And so you can just really leverage this as long as the Japanese yen depreciates. So let me show you what this might look like here. I'm going to call my bank up as one does here. And Japanese yen, now remember in Japan, we've had low rates in the United States, this zero interest rate policy, ZERP, we call it. Well, they've had more or less ZERP and NERP, negative interest rates for more years than we've had, and they've remained that way. So we can go to Japan, and I'm gonna say, let's borrow at 2% here, and we have JPY, and I'm gonna borrow at 2%, and just so you can humor me, stick with me here, I'm gonna go ahead and borrow 14 billion Japanese yen. 14 billion, my bank's gonna give that to me at 2% here. That would be really nice. And there we go. Borrowing at 2%, I've got 14. Let's add three more zeros for the billion in my pocket. So what I'm gonna do here is I wanna borrow at the lower amount. I wanna go find some place where I can go invest at a, at a higher amount as well. And so that's where we can go. The, the popular trade has been to go to uh, the United States where we have about 5% or uh, Europe, the Eurozone, any other more stable currency. Because Japan right now, if we look at the rates, we see that one Japanese yen, this is how we read currency quotes, one of the first entry here. So one Japanese yen equals X amount of US dollars. And 0 0.0071. When we flip it around, it's the inverse. So we usually see it. quotes, the stock screen currency. We'll see one US dollar equals approximately 140 Japanese yen. And so one US dollar equals 140 Japanese yen. One Japanese yen equals 0 0.0071 US dollars. So then what I do is I take my 14 billion yen. And I'm going to convert this to US dollars. Bring that into US dollars. Now, how many US dollars do I have? 
Well, conveniently, the numbers work out where if I have 14 billion at 140, I'm going to have 100 million US dollars to invest. 100 million US dollars to invest. Now, depending on the fund, the trader that's trading, it's up to them what they're going to do here. So we've seen in the markets a lot of these carry trade risk or carry trade uh, investors, they pile into the Magnificent Seven. So they're in Meta, they're in NVIDIA, all of these big hot stocks. And so this is adding to the volatility as well when they have to pull, get them out of these as well. So I'm going to use a conservative measure. All I want is a money market fund. So get me in a money market fund at 5%. I'll be totally happy, no risk, and well, seemingly no risk here. So give me 5% in the US dollars. We're going to go for a year. That means at 5%, my 100 million turns into 105 million. And so now the moment of truth comes where I've borrowed at 2%, and that's grown a little bit here to 14 billion, 280 million. Japanese yen, I think I did the numbers correct. And now what has happened over the last number of years, especially now that the US has a 5% interest rate strengthened against the Japanese yen over time and has continued to do that. So what happens to the US dollar here is you would typically see a number, something to the tune of one US dollar equals 160 Japanese yen. We kind of touched at 160 here, I believe a little bit earlier this year. And then if we converse that, we turn it around, that means that one Japanese yen equals 0 0.0625 US dollars each. And that just means that the US dollar has strengthened over the yen. The Japanese yen has continued to weaken against the US dollar. What that means for the carry trade is that when we pay off this $14.28 billion loan, you need $89,250,000 US dollars at that 160 level here to pay off your loan. And then you get to keep the rest of it to the tune of $15,000,000 and $750,000. So if I'm starting with 100 million, I'm keeping, that's a 15% profit. And all I've done is I've just been in a money market. So I haven't put a ton of money at risk. And all the magic works is, is because the US dollar has strengthened and the Japanese yen has weakened. And so this became a very well-known trade among hedge funds and large traders to the tune, and I can't get a precise number, trillions of dollars are sloshing through this kind of trade. So what that means, when things are going well, everyone's jumping on this. If the majority of people are going this way, they're selling yen and buying US dollars. But what recently happened is the Bank of Japan has started to mention that they're gonna increase rates. And what has happened with the increase of rates had become a stronger Japanese yen. So what happens to these carry traders who are floating along on this money train is they start getting pinched. Now they got their money over here tied up and they're living, they're gonna pay less US dollars. What happens if, and this is what's happened, check the quotes. I'm gonna throw out some rounded numbers here, but show the quotes to see how far the Japanese yen has strengthened against the dollar here. I'm going to make it 120. So what happens if US dollar weakens from 140 to 120? Well, that means that is 0 0.0833. One Japanese yen equals 0 0.0833. Now, how much does it cost to pay out this loan at 120? Well, I did the calculation for you and it looks like it's going to cost 118 million 
$952,400 with some rounding. Now you see the problem. When it turns on these traders, they become upside down on their loans and they're paying more on their Japanese yen loan. So what happens here is traders start getting unnerved. The banks holding these loans start going, hey, margin call time. We need some money to back it up because you're underwater on these things right now. And so we see suddenly this, if it's trillions of dollars truly doing this, we have an exodus from US dollars into Japanese yen. So what does that do for the Japanese yen over the short term when all this money is transferring back? Let's think about it. Everyone is selling US dollars in order to buy back Japanese yen. That is gonna make the Japanese yen even stronger and then certainly weaker against the U. That's gonna make it stronger against the US dollar and the US dollar will then get weaker from its selling pressure. So we see this now and we're starting to see it ripple into equity markets because somebody's holding these losing positions we don't know who they are at the moment. We don't know what banks and their exposure to some of these risks are. So it's really unsettled the market. And if you're invested in stocks over here and you need to rip those down, sell all those positions to get it back to square up with your bank, this is why we're seeing some of this sudden, I don't know, we'll call it uncertainty or definitely some volatility. The VIX, the volatility index has definitely taken note. And uh, time will tell. Let's see how this plays out. But I just wanted to give you a basic understanding of this term, how it can work out with a simple example here. And uh, would love to hear your comments and feedback around this. If you need anything from me, just let me know. You can check out the Behavioral Finance Podcast. We took a step into the world of international finance, which is the other class I teach usually each semester at Butler. And I felt like this was a very timely topic to talk about, to bring this to light because we're seeing it happen right in front of our eyes. So anyway, we'd love to hear from you. Check me out at brianfoltis.com. You can find me on Instagram or LinkedIn. We'd love to hear from you. Let me know how I can serve you. Otherwise, have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you later. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Brian Foltis Behavioral Finance Podcast. We hope you found our exploration into the fascinating world of human behavior and finance, both enlightening and thought-provoking. Be sure to subscribe for future episodes. And until next time, stay curious and financially savvy.